Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A podcast on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Avant. I'm here with my main man, Quinn Michael. Say what's up to the people. What's going on, everybody? We back again, man. <laughs> I know. We, we're, we're back. Yeah, Ready man. to go. Looking <laughs> forward to the playoffs. The regular season is done. The Birds with a franchise record winning season, 14 wins, 14 and three. First time it's been done in Eagles history. What a great season this has been. We would all like it to be going in a different trajectory as of now, but looking back over everything, this team has severely overachieved in a lot of our minds, especially with where we were at the end of the season last year. Most of us thought that this team would be anywhere between seven and 10 wins. They end up getting yeah. four more, the number one seed in the NFC. Before we get any further into this, we want to say thank you guys for tuning in to the Q&A podcast on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. Also check us out Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Amazon, and Apple as well to Jeff and to Adam and to Evan and Josh and everyone that's responsible behind the scenes. Thank you guys. Again, make sure that you email your questions to InsideTheBirds at gmail.com. Again, InsideTheBirds at gmail dot com for your questions this is the q a podcast we always answer questions at the end of the show so send your questions to inside the birds at gmail.com the eagles barely beat the backup <laughs> new york football giants 16 to 22 very frustrating win Talk about the big picture takeaway for you, Quentin Michael. Listen, <laughs> it's the end of the year. They got through. The, they got through the game. They won the game. Mm -hmm. They got the one seed. They got the bye week. Yep. To me, that's all this was about. I mean, they got through the game. They won the game. You know, it wasn't pretty at all. It was actually really boring. It was a really frustrating game to watch. Mm -hmm. Um, but they got it done. I mean, at the end of the day. You know, they got the one. They got the win. Nobody, no big injuries. Yeah. Nothing glaring, like no glaring issues, no glaring problems. And so, you know, they just went out and handled business. They did what they had to do. They got out the game, and that's it. Kind of look at it like a pre, like a preseason game, but it was ugly, man. I, I, yeah. You know, it, they got out of the game healthy. Yeah. And that's the blessing. They they came to win to lock up number one seed. They got that done. They got out of the game fairly healthy. So that's the only thing that you can ask for. The last thing you need is the Giants to be out there playing their backups. And those dudes are kamikaze and hurting people. <laughs> so um, we are extremely grateful to get out of the game pretty much intact. So that was the blessing behind it. But the Eagles stunk that game, to be honest with you. <laughs> they did. They couldn't score in the red zone. It was definitely frustrating, and it was on their face. Most of the third and fourth quarter, they were like, are you kidding me? We cannot get the ball in the end zone. We're getting to press too much. The defensive backs, like Darius Slay, looking for interception, not playing technically sound. And this has been going on the last few weeks or so where he's looking for picks. And a lot of guys are looking for turnovers because remember, this team for most of the year was the number one team in the league when it comes to turnover margin and turnovers in general. And those turnovers have slowly dissipated, slowly subsided down the stretch of the season. So um, when you're looking at those things, that this team is looking for turnovers. Therefore, the Giants are able to sustain drives in that manner. And also, one thing I want to show you, man, that, that's, that I'm really not liking. Last game, A.J. Brown, I believe, was four for nine. He had like 97 <laughs> yards. Not this past game versus the Saints, but the, the game. Um, not Cowboys. this past game versus the, um, the Giants, but the game versus the Saints. 
Four for nine. Mm -hmm. This week, he's four for 10. Mm. It's even worse. He had 95 yards because it's the big play. Yeah. But that connection has to start hitting, and it can't be at a 40% clip. As a receiver, Mm -hmm. you want your catching percentage to be over 70%. When a quarterback throws you the ball, you want to be over 70% of the time you're catching the football. You don't want to be down in the 40s. The 50s get you fired. The 40s are even worse. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. gotta win. You gotta separate. You gotta I win. Never... And there's no way that 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 flot can 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 stick AJ Brown. And he covered him a few times. Shouldn't happen. Um, I'm going to 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 get back on track right here. Um, the Eagles, the two times in the last <clears throat> five years, have clinched the number one seed. What do you think about that? The Super Bowl year, number one seed Eagles. 2022 23 Eagles number one seed. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, that's that's telling me it's that's impressive, and it's, that's telling me that there's a good system in place, um, especially with two different coaching staffs. I mean, yeah. there's a good system in place. That means there's a good, um, you know, obviously the the GM Howie and and the the the, the sports nerds up there, you know, mm-hmm. figuring out the right people to bring into the locker room. Um, you know, getting good contracts, good deals for guys. And, uh, you know, I think it's a great combination of the program with bringing the right people in, assimilating them into the system and figuring out what they all do well and letting them succeed in doing that. And so I think it's just a testament to, you know, the GM, Howie and and the staff and, you know, more so um, kind of the front office deal than more than the coach, obviously the coaching staff has a huge, huge, um, you know, they're a huge factor in that, but as you know, players play and to mm-hmm. be able to continuously have, you know, these, these stars and these, these productive players coming in here and guys that have been here for a while, still playing at a high level. Mm-hmm. That's just kind of a testament to what this program is all about. Yeah. It's the first time it's been done in NFL history, right? So yeah. Uh, um, two number one seeds within five years for a team that's never been done before. Eagles are the first team to do it in NFL history. So that's, yes, that's the front office. That's the coaching. That's the resilience, um, re- resiliency of the team and the leadership. There's a lot of guys that have, that, that have been on both teams. So um, definitely had a, have a great foundation there. Um, usually you like to be ascending going into the playoffs. Yeah. The the best the best teams usually are going up when it comes when it comes to when it comes to the Eagles they're not necessarily going up maybe they're going sideways are you worried about that and their their trajectory going into the playoffs because you usually like to be hot like yeah. it doesn't matter what you do early in the season. If you're hot going in the playoffs, usually that carries over. What do you think about the Eagles going in sideways? Yeah, I'm I'm a little nervous about that. And and I think a huge part of the sideways trajectory is the injury problem. Um, you know, maybe overthinking some things in the offensive game plan and the defensive game plan. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Like if you look at what the Niners have been able to do with backup quarterbacks and how they're just they're on fire right now. Like that's the team that you want to be right now. Nobody, nobody wants to play this team right now. And I'm talking about the Niners team. And that's really what you want to do because it it is a new season. Um, Everybody's eyes are on you each week, one and done. And so you definitely want to be playing your best football, your most exciting type of football, your most aggressive uh, type of defense, your most aggressive play calling on offense. Like, I'm a little worried about it. Um, I do think it's more so to deal with with the the injuries. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping that this week off will get us back on track. But that does worry me a little bit. What about you? It definitely worries me. The injuries are huge, but you like to be you like to feel invincible. Yeah. And there's this element of of destiny and fate that comes into the picture and when you're winning multiple games in a row the players begin to believe things like this is our year 
Yeah. And this is destiny. And that alone is a very dangerous thing. When a whole bunch of guys believe like, yo, this is our year. All the stars are aligning. And just the power in that belief system, you feel like you have a hundred bullets in the gun and you got nine lives out there. That's the way you feel. Mm -hmm. And when you have that mentality, you play better for some reason. So, mm -hmm. um, so the teams that are on the win streak going to playoffs, they tend to do a little bit better. So yes, I'm very concerned with where we are now. Like I said, I pointed out AJ Brown hadn't been able to connect the way that we want to connect with him. Um, the running game over the last month or so hasn't been the same uh, the defense and and all of its glory earlier in the season now is becoming um, very very um, just stagnant. Read like it's it's stagnant, but but it's very it's very easy to to get yards on. It, it's not it's not like a stingy defense, and it hadn't been all year, but it hadn't caught up to us the way that it is now because there's no turnovers and the offense isn't putting the ball in the end zone at a high rate, especially these last two games. So um, I'm definitely concerned when you're looking at other teams in NFC that are playing well in the moment. You know, Tampa is starting to get a little bit better. Yeah. Um, the 49ers have rattled off nine straight games. That's impressive. Right? So when you yeah. when you consider, you're like, man, are the Eagles playing their best football? Not right now. There's some other teams that are playing their best football going into the playoffs. So, you, so you're definitely concerned. Correction, that the Eagles are the first team in NFL history to have a number one seed with two different um, quarterbacks and two different uh, head coaches. So that was the, to have a number one seed in that five year in that five year period. Two different head coaches, two different starting quarterbacks. Yeah, still yeah. impressive. Yeah. All right. TV TV analyst Charles Davis said Eagles had to be frustrated. Right, they had a frustrated look on their face, um, like they would be rather um, like they would rather be playing this weekend. I don't know about all that. You can be frustrated, <laughs> but nobody is like yo. <laughs> I'd rather be playing this weekend. No, you know you get paid for getting the bye week this week. You am I right? No, you're not. They did. They, they, don't you get paid this week? At least, unless they change the new CBA, the way it was when I was playing. Unless you were playing, you are not getting paid. So you get what? the bye week, but you don't get that bonus unless you play in the game. See, that's how so you that was, to get that bye week. Yeah, I was, I was glad to be playing there. <laughs> For real, when we when the younger player, let me get that, let me get that money. That's, that's, but, that's terrible. They, that, if you get a buy, you should definitely get paid. <laughs> I agree. It it, it yeah. should be that way. But any but anyhow, bye week or not, but I I definitely don't think that they would rather be playing in this moment in this time. Yes, did they look frustrated? They were pissed. Mm -hmm. Um, the head coach, I I seen Nick Sirianni like. They pan to him on the sideline. He was rolling his eyes. Jalen Hurts was going to the sideline, rolling his eyes. AJ Brown was pouting. It was it was a bunch of. I was like, dude, they they want to beat this team by forty, and they just this they just couldn't. Yeah, man. Just Preston. It's the Giants, man. It's the I'm gonna, Giants. I'm gonna tell you why, but we're gonna get into it as we get into this segment. I'll show you because the next part of it. You go ahead and take over. Yeah, no, I mean I agree. I... <laughs> That that bye week is more valuable than any amount of money. Now, I won't say any amount of money, but the bye week is like gold this time of year. Yeah. Because when you cut, so when you get that week off, you get the extra week of study. You get to watch this team play. They get to beat each other up, whoever they're playing. You get to get mm -hmm. them coming in off of, off of a, a probably a tough, hard fought win, and you just go in that that game after the bye week, just gliding. Like I'll never forget. One year we had a, a bye week. I was on kickoff first time. I was like, "Woo, I got some new legs running down <laughs> on this thing, man. These things are new." So it's it's a whole different ball game. Um, I I I, I don't I agree with you, I, Charles Davis. I got I got to stop you right there. <laughs> this new age group don't know about <laughs> leg problems, man. They don't practice. They play football games. They don't <laughs> practice. They practice for an hour and fifteen minutes. They go to training camp for two days at 45 minute practice of peace. Right? So listen, this team that has fresh legs most of the year. That's true. Good point. To, we used to get treated so poorly 
that <laughs> when we had a regular practice without pads, we thought we had fresh legs. It was a mental thing. So you give us That's a five right. week, we really had fresh legs because th- it was the coach's job to make us tie. That's why the Eagles teams, when I was playing, always finished well at the end of the year. Yep. Because Coach Reed killed you at the beginning, of the, the beginning of the year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We used to be remember, playing against ourselves out there. You remember? You remember uh, when we started getting to seven on seven, and then we would switch the the shoulder pads off and put yeah. the shells on. That, that's a perfect example. Like we used to be in full pads all the way up until what week week eight, but then ten. when yeah wait week ten, but then at some point. After maybe like the fifth or sixth game, Coach Rita started letting us take the shoulder pads off and then put the shells on. And man, we was like, it was like party time out there, man. Yeah, like, you yeah. all happy. You still <laughs> running the same reps. <laughs> we still the, the practice didn't get short at all. We just took some pads <laughs> off us. We out there like woo. Yeah. Jedi it's them Jedi tricks. mind tricks, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so. Let's go. On. Let's keep moving on. Topic two, man. Um, yeah. So let's discuss Jalen Hurts, man. Um, you know he's a starter. While coming back um, from a shoulder injury, um, it's obvious that he wasn't hundred percent. What do you think about his performance? Well, so let's get something straight. And this is, and this is not a necessarily a hot take, but this is the take that I got from this game in particular. Jalen Hurts was told not to put himself in harm's way at all. At all. The Jalen Hurts that we saw play this game was Jalen Hurts trying to protect himself and save himself for the playoffs. He was playing a football game to win, but it was with an asterisk of not putting yourself in harm's way. And that's the way of football that Jalen Hurts will not be as effective doing the element of him running the element of him doing what's best for the team and converting third downs with his legs and even threatening the line of scrimmage with him on his game plan of the ride the the read option and all those things it it adds a different element to the 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 offense did our offense still play well when you really consider it we drove the ball up and down the field we just didn't score touchdowns if you turn some of those into touchdowns, that game is something like 42 to 7 or something something along those lines pretty early and pretty quick. But we didn't score a touchdown, so now the score is down, and it looks even worse than, than, than the game actually was. But part of that was Jalen Hurts was in, pres- in, 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 in um, you know, preservation. He was trying not to, you know, get in harm's way. So And, and I respect that. Was he a little bit rusty? Yeah. With some throws, did he throw a bonehead interception right into double coverage when it was unnecessary? I don't know if he thought thought he had a free play, but he definitely couldn't have thought. I knew it was holding. He had to know it was holding too, <laughs> right? So um, that was a bonehead play. Didn't connect a lot down the field with AJ Brown. Had him a few times down the field. Uh, you know, didn't play well overall. So, but at the end of the day. We know that he's capable of it. I'm glad he is able to get out the game injury free, but mm-hmm. you can tell it's a different offense when he when the threat of him running is gone. That's true. So, <clears throat> do you think? So you know, a lot of times with with especially with receivers and stuff, everybody talks about timing and timing and timing. Now he was out for what two games? Or was it three? Three. Two, yeah, two, he, two he's been out. He's been out. Yeah. He's been do out you think? Do you think this was? And uh, I mean, obviously he's pre- pre- preserving himself, but do you think it has something to do with the timing as well with him and, and AJ and not connecting? Or do you think it's just a little rust? I think, I think you're going to have some rust out there. And remember big, and remember That's big plays, sad. big plays are tough to come by in general. I think that uh, AJ has to do a little bit better job of uncovering and being a little more sudden at the top of his routes. And, and uh, running every route to win and using his body to be able to 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 press into guys like he had a stop route against Flot on the right side and he ran next to him and just stopped 
the best corners you can't run next to and stop when they're on the same plane. You have to press your body into them and use that physical nature that you have and come back down or outside of your stem. But you, there's a point in every route when it's even that you got to just abort quickness and use power in order to throw the guy off balance, especially when he's on balance. I got you. So that's what you mean by uncover? Uncover. uncover. Okay. Yeah. So that uh-huh. like little things like that, but it, but that's timing. Yes, that's timing. That's Russ. Those two guys are pros. Both of those guys are pro bowlers. They're going to be able to figure it out. I'm not doom is gloom. I think it's definitely in their it, definitely in their wheelhouse to do. Uh, is it being done right now? No. Mm. All right. Yeah. All right. So that being said, what do you expect from Jalen in a couple of weeks when they play? Um, I'm expecting Jalen Hurts to get as much timing down over the over over this week as, as possible. I'm sure with the type of person that he is and the type of pro that he is, and what's at stake that he's somewhere throwing with those dudes like right now and trying his best to simulate game situations and him and the coaching staff trying to come up with a game plan and get some more reps and to 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 be prepared for the game plan that's that's coming up. I'm sure that there's going to be um the one game that you you know we we're we're probably we'll, we'll get to that later but um the thing about the NFC we played all the teams that are there. Mm-hmm. It's not like we're playing a team that we hadn't, um, you know, so we're, we're playing, we're all the good teams we played, you know, this year or the last couple of years. So we kind of know what they do. And so, so, I, so I'm expecting him to play well. I'm, I'm expecting him to overcome it. And once he's able to run again, this, this offense is just different. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I like that. He's um, all right. To... You, you want to take this? Let's see. Yeah. Miles Sanders, just, just 11. Um, for 33, right? So the running backs this week, in general, Boston Scott, nine for 54. Um, Kenneth Gainwell, five for 35. Miles Sanders, 11, 11 rushes, 33 yards. Didn't get the ball much in the fourth quarter and is wearing a um, left knee brace. Um, is that a concern for you or do you think his injury is worse than what is being named? Oh, uh, that's a, I mean, that's a tough one. I, I, First of all, I'm gonna just say the the bigger concern is I feel like the last few weeks the this Eagles team have gotten away from the run game in general. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, um, what game? I guess starting with the with the well, Bears, yeah, it was yeah. like they just started getting pass happy. So that's probably the biggest concern is that they have this focus right now on throwing the ball instead of you know what kind of got you there is, is the, the run game and the threat of run the run the run game, mm-hmm. but. For me, I, anytime I see me personally, anytime I see a running back wearing a knee brace like that, I get a little concerned. I do think that there's probably something a little bit more. I mean, they wouldn't put him out there. He wouldn't go out there if he if he wasn't sure it couldn't be re-injured. But I think it's a little bit worse than um, everyone's leading on. They're trying to limit his yeah. carries, I believe, and you know maybe save him for the playoff run. But I don't know, for me, the bigger concern is like they just got it to stick to the run, especially in the playoffs, man. You got to run the ball. You got to be able to run the ball. And the Eagles have the luxury. I agree with you. They have the luxury to be able to run the ball. Eagles average four point yards, a carry or less in four out of the six games, right? So the last four out of six games, they've been under four yards or right at four yards a carry. In comparison to the first seven out of nine games, right? They were over 4.2 or higher, right? So their numbers are going in the opposite direction when it comes to running the football. And they're one of those teams that have the luxury to be able to run the football. And yes, they made a decision at the break by week that we're going to come out throwing the ball and then we're going to finish it with the run. Prior to that, we had more of a balance. The drives were longer, the points were down, but we still were playing really good football. So I think that 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 needs to here's another bye week. Yeah. Here's another chance to self scout. So now you mix the two or you go back to the first, right? I don't think that one philosophy has to be true the entire year because remember, teams begin to recognize what you're doing. Hey, this team is pass heavy the first half and then they get into the run game. 
they're going to structure their defense like that. How about throwing them off balance with changing up your philosophy sometimes? Hey, the first quarter, we're going to be heavy run. Second quarter, we're going to be passed, right? That was kind yeah. of the beginning of the, the season when yeah. we were the leading, league, leading the league in second quarter points. That was actually what was happening. Mm-hmm. Right, so yeah. let's let's revert back to that and 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 die and, and 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 mix those things rather than just holding still to one ideology, one philosophy. I like that, yeah. And I, I totally, I wasn't even thinking about that. It is like another bye week. It's a way for them to self scout and and break it down a little bit more, and you know. But we'll we'll get into this a little bit too. But you know, there are a few little distractions and stuff during this week, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Ooh. But yeah, they can't, they, can't, they can't let it let it go. They, they got they got they got they. Got, you you one loss, boy. You you got you got you got a few few more weeks of football, then you can go wherever you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so AJ Brown on Sunday set a franchise record. Um, you know, for receiving yards, one thousand four hundred ninety six. He eclipsed uh, Mike Quick. Um. And Devontae had 95 catches. Those are the best. That's the most ever for an Eagles receiver. Um, how much of a problem do you think they're going to be in the playoffs? So let's get something straight. I respect all of what these gentlemen have done to 1,000 yards receiving, um, to 1,000 yard receivers for the Eagles' first time in Eagles history that a duo has been able to do that. Mm. Um, respect 1,400 yards and also 95 catches, still the most. They didn't do it in 16 games. It don't count. <laughs> Flat out. <laughs> they're pro bowlers. They're great players. But I'm not acknowledging. If I was Mike Quick, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have came down and did nothing. <laughs> If I, I may sound like an old hater or something, but listen, uh, no, that ain't how it goes. They got to be in the same amount of games. If not, you know, it just ain't the same. That's like counting when I was in, when I, my first couple of years in college, when the season was over, the season, your stats were done. The bowl game was separate yeah. stats, those playoff <laughs> stats. I became a junior. They start adding your bowl, your, your your bowl game stats to your stats, and then you start seeing dudes that shouldn't be breaking Anthony Carter and Tim Brown's NCAA record. Like, man, hold on, they didn't got five extra games. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna take. Go ahead. I'm not hating. Your... I'm not. If y'all think it's hating, y'all think it's hating. I'm saying sixteen games, seventeen games. There it is. I I believe that they they're the best duo in Eagle in Eagles history, flat out. But the extra stats of the the ninety five <laughs> catches and the, the the beat Mike Quick, man, I'm punting that. You gotta put an asterisk, but yeah, stop it. <laughs> so we got so we got so then we got to take the page out of your book on this this uh, franchise record for the fourteenth win because they got an extra they had an extra game in there. Exactly. Get that there, one. So there, I, yeah, there, man. Exactly. Put an asterisk by that one too, man. Exactly. <laughs> we want them to win the Super Bowl, but we can't give them preferential treatment. Yeah. <laughs> I can dig it. Yeah. <laughs> All <Yeah>. right. <clears throat> Mojo. Mojo is building the sports stock market where you can invest in your favorite players. Invest in what you know. Turn your sports knowledge into real money with Mojo, the sports stock market. Real stats, real value. Shares entitle you to a guaranteed payout based on career ending stats. No off days, no off season. Share prices rise and fall constantly in real time based on career long projection. Cash out anytime. Build a portfolio and buy and sell on your terms. Every play, every game, or every season. Mojo is available in New Jersey on iOS. By just downloading the app, you have the chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Click the link in the description for a chance to win up to $10,000 in free shares of player stock. Must be 21 years or over, physically located in New Jersey to trade on Mojo. Have a gambling problem? Help. 
is available at 1-800-GAMBLER. Q, there is some risers and some fallers for yeah. the Eagles. Yes, sir. Let's see. And let's check this out. Because around the league, there's guys that are rising up. Mm -hmm. You know who I like this who week? You like? Who you like? Sam Howell for the Commanders. Finally getting the chance, beating uh -huh. our arch nemesis, the Dallas Cowgirls. <laughs> Sam Howell, 169 yards, 11-19, one touchdown. But Coach Ron Rivera, that didn't know he was eliminated from the playoffs last week, said that he's definitely going to be QB something. We don't know if it'll be QB1 or QB2, meaning that his career has a fighting chance of going in the positive direction. And the chances are because of where the commanders pick, they may not have a chance at one of the top quarterbacks. So Sam Howell may be battling out with Taylor Heineke one more year. All right. And the battle usually goes to the unproven player that's showing a lot of potential rather than a guy that you know is going to keep you around 500. So Sam Howe's career could be going in a positive direction. Who knows that something good can come out of North Carolina. Mm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Wait a minute, man. <laughs> North Carolina. I like it. All right, so... Who is my riser? I, you know what? I just I just saw this. Davis Webb for the Giants. It was what? at seventy one point five zero percent. Why I did not get him? I told you we got to go with the backup. You right, backs, man? You know how much money we would have made. You the backup quarterbacks. You right. That's it. It's the backup quarterbacks. They're going to get hurt. They're soft, and the rules protect them, so they're not used to getting getting hit. <laughs> He was up 71.5%. He was 23 of 40, 168 yards and one touchdown. That is in that, that's that's like winning the lottery right there, man. 71%. Oh, mm. That's that would have been a oh, that's a good one for somebody. So this guy, this next guy I'm gonna talk about, Jordan Akins, tight end for the Texans. Uh, he had four receptions, 70 yards. You saw that he had two touchdowns. He had the game-winning uh, touchdown and the game-winning two-point conversion. The guy uh -huh. is a is a freak athlete. He's playing for the Texans. We don't know who the new head coach is going to be. We don't know who their offensive coordinator is going to be. I just have a feeling that they're going to have to keep this guy around and give him the ball more because he's an athletic, fast, um, problem, problem matchup as a tight end. So for me... I like Jordan Atkins. He's up 10.5%. He's a riser, but he's still, I think you can still get him on a steal. Mm. I like it. I like it. I, I like it. I like it. There's there's a lot of guys like that are that are trending down, right? Just think about just think about a guy like Trey Lance. You lose your job, mm. right? You get hurt. Jimmy G plays well. Jimmy G gets hurt. Then Brock Purdy comes in and rattles off wins not turning the ball over, finding people. Can it be a worse position to be in in life right now than freaking Trey Lance? No, oh, man. Yes. He was the he was the starter, named the starter, wasn't playing well, gets hurt. Jimmy G comes back, changes it back to a Super Bowl contender, and then Jimmy G goes down, and Brock Purdy takes it and goes in the other direction, something that the guy that was drafted in the first round didn't do. It's a mm. terrible time to be Trey Lance, and and, yeah. and, and, and and it may be time to jump off that bandwagon. You don't know what happened, real. And while you heard they bring McCaffrey in, and he he didn't have what 14, 1300 yards from scrimmage. Yeah, I feel you. I'm sorry, Trey. It's, it's tough, man. Happen. It's tough yeah. to be Trey. It's tr tough to be Trey Lance right now. <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, but he's a niner. He's a niner. We don't care. Yeah. <laughs> But right. make sure you check out Mojo. Win some money. We lost out on 71%. Mm. Davis Webb. Damn. Good, man. It's like winning the lotto. <laughs> Eagles only allowed 16 points, Q. 16 points. 
only allowed 16 points. Last week, they only allowed 13 points. The defense should be listed among the all-time greats, the Chicago Bears, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Baltimore Ravens, the Steel Curtain, the Purple People Eaters. <laughs> <laughs> Eagles only allowed 16 points, but a lot of soft coverage. Not much of any blitzing. Jonathan Gannon, um, practice squad quarterback, goes out and plays well against the Birds. Thoughts on the game plan? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like a broken record, to be honest with you. I feel like we've been we've been saying the same thing for two years now, and I'm just frustrated. Um, <laughs> as we talked about before the show, we were talking about, um, you know, with Jeff, we're talking about how teams, how the Eagles had um, in this game, they had a 13 personnel set where they came out with. Um, Cal, can, how did I can you Alcatan? How can you say? How do you say yeah, his name? Calcaterra. Calcaterra. Mm -hmm. um, um stole Dallas and stole right mm -hmm. 13 personnel set which normally says they're going to come out and run it they're going to be three tight ends in a three-point stance they're going to come out and run they come out they flexed out they're all spread they run the ball they pass the ball out of it right so the Eagles offense does something like this and what that does is that makes the whoever the opposing team that the Eagles are going to play now that defensive coordinator has to prepare for that now he has to go and say, okay, guys, they got these three big athletic tight ends. They could be in three-point stances. They might run the ball out of it. They might come out and throw the ball out of it. So this is something we got to prepare for. So it's it's like a, a mind game against the, the team. So when you're putting stuff on tape, anything you're putting on tape, the defensive coordinator for the other team has to take that seriously because it's a threat. So – when I look at this Eagles defense and I see a game like this where they have a backup quarterback not playing all their starters and we're still playing the same soft defense, what are you putting on tape? They're going to do the same exact thing in the game mm -hmm. against us. Same exact thing that they've been doing all year, same thing they've been doing last year. So I say all that to say I'm just frustrated because this is a perfect opportunity. Even if you don't call any blitzes in the next game, even if you don't call any press coverages, even if you don't call anything out of out of the ordinary for you in this next playoff game, put it on tape against a game that doesn't really mean that. And so a team has to spend time studying it. Mm, so they great, can't great predict what you're going to be in great every point. single play. And so for me, like that's the that's the frustrate. There's opportunities within a game. As coaches, they always say, you got to take advantage of your opportunities. Point, you got to go out there. You got to do what you got to do. You got to, you know, you're, you were only in this for a certain amount of time. You're going to get, you know, you're going to get cut at some point. You're going to get fired at some point. Like take these opportunities as a coach to put something on tape. That's going to make your job easier. So I am, I'm really frustrated yeah. with the way that this went. And I don't know why I was surprised. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. I guess I shouldn't say, I, I said all that to say, I, I wasn't surprised. I'm just frustrated. <laughs> I'm just uh, it's it's frustrating because there's opportunity. And what a great point. Because as an offense, if a team shows cover two, cover three, cover four, and man, you don't, you're not even – but if they show you one snap of zero coverage, you have to practice like a lot for that one snap of zero coverage that they put because they're going to put both people in the A-gaps the line mm -hmm. has to figure out a way to 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 block up that those a gap that a gap pressure and who we, who are we gonna leave free? All right, we're gonna leave the dude on the left free. Jalen, you roll to the right, and Jason, you better be at, like. There's so much thought that goes into pressure. There's no thought that goes into cover two because everything is already prescripted for those plays. That's yes. handled in your base game plan. So the offensive coordinator is looking at the Eagles like, bro, I don't have to really think. My quarterback really doesn't have to think. All of these plays we do every day because this is standard base defense that you're playing against us, and all of my concepts are good. <laughs> you have to make this dude 
behind the 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 headset literally go and say hey what are we going to do with this overload blitz because it's attacking my te- my my scat protection and it's going to leave a runner free either inside the tackle or outside the tackle and we got to come up with a new scheme to block that now that's coaching because they have to change something within their system in order to adapt to you and therefore the chances of them executing something they have never done before is very low that's coaching <laughs> and, and for the life of me i don't understand it like you've got all yeah. these these great players on this defense all these great yeah cornerbacks defensive ends for days defensive tackles like if you're going to take chances these are the guys to do it with yeah. If you're gonna play, if you put it this way, Wink Martindale in that game had all his backup defense. And guess what he was running? He was running zero blitzes. He got he got uh tackles dropping out. Yep. He was coming after the Eagles, the Eagles offense with it with backups. With we backup. had our starters, a, a a damn near all-star team, and we're just still playing this basic defense and just getting just, it's, just soft, 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 just, soft. You, 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 even Davis Webb can complete passes. In him. <laughs> exactly. Even da- even Davis Webb <laughs> can complete. Andy Dalton can go to Pro Bowl if he play against this defense every week. That's crazy, man. It's it's it's, it's oh. nuts. It's nuts. And the thing I'll tell you this is the thing that and and and, and listen. He's not giving up a bunch of points, but I'm telling you, these are bad. These are offensively challenged teams. The Giants is an offensively challenged team. And the thing is, is we play defense like we can't score points offensively. Like we got to we got to stop people from scoring so scoring scoring at all in order for us to win these games. We got to keep the game low, so we got to like let them get as many yards but keep them out the end zone, right? Yeah. Offense can score points. And check and check this out. There's competitors back there. When other teams score, you get more incentive to score. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you go out and just go change your your game plan completely, but it's okay. If if any team is okay with taking a chance, your offense can come back. Your defense can get a turnover because you got players. It's okay. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. You're not you're not playing with an offensively challenged team. Oh my god. I'm just, yeah. I just, I'm so. Uh, All right. Let me, let me just calm down for yes, a second. Yes, no, this is for you. <laughs> CJ Gardner Johnson came back. Safety only in base downs, nickel back and nickel sub packages. Is this the right move going forward? Takes Josiah Scott off the field and puts Reed Blankenship on the field and subs. Um. So he played nickel. And nickel and nickel um, coverage, nickel 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 coverages, and and then in base defense, he was at safety. Yeah, uh, this is that's mm, so he's playing safety and nickel. That can be so he's going back and forth. That could be that troublesome. It, it it does happen. It could be you troublesome. You know, he's doing Charles Woodson used to do it when he was yeah. with Green Bay. Yeah, no, that's Charles Woodson. No, okay, so. I, I I I think well you know what as we were, as our previous uh, statements in this defense it'll be no problem <laughs> it'll be no problem because <laughs> he's he's gonna have minimal um, responsibilities at, at either one so I'm fine with it as long as Josiah Scott like I, I love the guy I think he's he made a nice play last week um, got the with the sink that, and the, uh, the, the interception yeah, on the right on the side, left sideline. Yeah, and he's getting he's getting there. He's just not there yet. Um, you know, in the playoff game, like I said before, this is one and done. You can't take no chances. You gotta have your best eleven on the field at all times. Whether yeah. that's CJ playing nickel and safety, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm I'm yeah. I'm hundred percent good with that. Um I like Reed Blankenship, as we said before. I think he's a good player. Yeah. Um he, you know, so I'm good with those guys. Josiah, he's just a little too up and down for me. So here we go. So this this is the frustrating part here. The frustrating part about this whole thing is is that I think this is the right move by mm-hmm. far. Yeah. I think that 
this is the right move. I believe that Josiah Scott is a liability in, in coverage and yes. especially man-to-man -man coverage. And it's been tacked the last five games, four games or so at a high rate, not a lot. C.D. Lamb, touchdowns. McLaurin, ball out. The Green Bay Packers on big plays was on a slot. Like every team that we've played in these games, um, Chris Olave in the slot, Rashid mm -hmm. um, Shahid in the slot. Like there's multiple plays where they're trying to get this guy's Jawan Johnson over him inside, right? So when you think about these games, they're attacking the middle of the field and trying to avoid Slay, trying to avoid Bradbury as much as they can. They, they're not afraid of those guys, but why go out there when you don't have to? So you put Garner Johnson, who has had experience at nickel and was one of the better nickels in the league. So now you kind of sure that up. And what I like about it is that you're putting your best group on the field. Now mm -hmm. let's flip that. Why can't the same thing be done with Lane Johnson now? Why do we have to have Jack Driscoll that's getting pushed back in and not have Jordan Malata move over the right tackle and put um, uh, freaking Andre Dillard there? Andre Dillard played really well, made himself a commodity in free agency last year, and the Eagles decided to keep him because they um, thought he was playing well. Um, but they could have moved him as well. So you put him at left tackle, you put Jordan Malata at right tackle. I don't understand the, the 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 love affair that we have with Jack Driscoll, you know, all the time. I just don't. And I and I believe that he's a good player and he's a young he's a young player. But the best move for the overall team like the defense did, let's put my best 11 players that are available out there on offense. We got to do the same thing and stop playing, put Jordan Mailata at right tackle and and and, uh, and Andre Dillard at left tackle. Until I, feel you, I feel you there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, um, and you've probably heard this before, but I, I understand as, I understand your point of it, but I also think like if you take Jordan and put him to the right, now you're going to have two guys that are not um, at their normal spots, if that makes yeah. sense. I mean, I guess Dillard normally he's a left, he's a left he's, tackle. He's no, he... he does better left. This ha this same thing happened last year. Yeah. The same thing yeah. happened last year, and 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 Dillard played well. Yeah. And my lot of play well. That's true. Yeah, I'm with you. So so it's definitely doable. It's just that they just Andre Dillard is just not. I don't think that he that's Jeff Stoutland is a fan. There's something about Andre Dillard that I don't believe that that they believe in, that he doesn't believe in. Yeah. Because athletically, he's a first round pick. Yeah. And everybody that covered the draft viewed him as a first round pick. Yeah. And if he's a first round pick, that means he has first round feet. He's not the, the most physical. But is Jack Driscoll super physical at right tackle right now? Mm -mm. I don't think he's super physical at right tackle right now. <laughs> no. So that, yeah. I mean, I don't want to speculate, but so that tells me it's some off the field stuff, like maybe studying yeah. or, yeah. That's... You know, you, you know, you want your, you, you want your players to have, like, here's the thing. All the other offensive linemen are, 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 are at least gritty when it comes to the run game and throwing their nose in there and being physical and nasty. That's not, that's not Andre Dillard's game. He went, he went Pac-12. Oh, it's not his game. I'm saying I, I'm not hating on you. It's Pac-12 though. It's not how many people, how many dudes you know from the Pac-12 that are super physical? Uh, a lineman? Yeah, no, yeah. They got <laughs> how are you gonna be physical and you gotta you got air raid offenses everywhere. It's just Tyron, tough to Tyron, be grinders and maulers. Tyron Smith from uh USC went to Dallas. He's physical. Okay. What's the one there's a center, uh Alex Unger. From Oregon, he's pretty physical. Man, if you want to go and say I, the 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 lion share of these dudes are physical, if you don't stop playing with me, 
If you don't stop playing with me, them dudes out there playing powder puff football out there with marshmallows and hot chocolate. Oh man, listen, I know you, I, I know you're still mad because of what, what happened to to Michigan. You know, that's the Big Twelve. Ago. I ain't say nothing. The Big Twelve. Michigan <laughs> lost, but Michigan would have gave Georgia a better game than that. They even gave them a better game than that last year. It was at least thirty-five to seventeen or something. Good point. Good point. Good point. I got nothing. Just All right, let's get it. back on track. All right, yeah, yeah. I was pissed yesterday <laughs> watching that game. Like, man, y'all going to come out and do this. Y'all should just stay this. Like, just go ahead and lay down like y'all lay down when y'all was playing us. But they just lay down. They weren't aggressive to the ball. They, they, got, they got their heart taken so early. Oh, man. Yeah, they were man. flying around against us, you know, talking stuff. <laughs> Corners were coming to tackle. They're looking at them dudes like Georgia, like right here, sir. I'll hold the door open for you. <laughs> the boys turning the bill hops out there. Right this way. <laughs> In the end zone. Hey, we take elevator number two. My tax service elevator. <laughs> Around the back. Around the back. They don't want nobody to see yeah. it. <laughs> All right. So, 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 so. What will opposing offenses look to do against the Eagles defense? <clears throat> well, I mean, you hit the you hit the nail on there. I think it's going to be ball control. They're going to run the ball. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to attack the middle of the field. And like you said, the nickel position is going to be a little more shored up with with CJ there. But I still think they're going to attack. They're going to attack Kaiser White, and they're going to attack. Um, um, I'm blanking right now. Um, CJ Edwards. TJ, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to start attacking them on the end breaking routes by the tight ends and number twos and threes on the in the slot. Um, and then I, I do think they're going to they're going to attack Slay, and I think it's because he's been putting it on film, like he's been a lights out corner, um, you know, most of his career. But the last few weeks that we've been talking about, he's he's been putting stuff on tape that's not characteristic of him, and they're deep balls or deep shots. He is trying to get interceptions, but in the playoffs, they're going to take those shots on him. So I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be ball control. Yeah. They're going to attack the middle of the field and they're going to take those shots when they can on, on yeah. Slay and, and Bradbury. He got one uh, last week as well. Yeah. So I think it's, that's going to be the game plan to beat this defense because if you get into a game, if you get to a game where you're, you're playing with, if you're coming from behind, when that defensive line is going to start coming after you, it's, mm -hmm. it's a different ball game. Then that's yeah. when all hell is going to break loose. So we already know they're not going to blitz. We already know they're not going to play aggressively. We already know we already know they're not going to change up the looks. So to me, that's what this team struggles with: is ball control, good run game, teams attacking the middle of the field, and teams taking shots at at, at smart times. Yeah. Do you think that because they because they are sitting ducks in a defense that's so easy to scheme up and so easy to pass against do you think that kind of makes the players feel like sitting ducks and they have to do something about it that's what I felt like in an offense that was so redundant I felt like I had to add my own flavor in order to make it look different and you kind of play outside of yourself because you're trying to do the coach's job because the the job isn't being done efficiently by by the coaching staff yeah, absolutely. When, I mean, <clears throat> they, the the players can only play what's being called, and if if you if they're calling, let's say they're calling you know quarters or a cover four the entire time, well, you you know as a cornerback, you know in quarters you're not going to really get that much help over top, so you're not going to press and play press aggressively how you should be playing with feeling someone's going to be over top. So what you're going to do? You're going to play it soft. And then by doing that, you're going to let this receiver get up on you and you're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to have your eyes in the backfield because you're going to start reading routes. And so I just think that the simple play, the simple play calling, the simple defense is not conducive for, for, for the long stretch, for a team playing an even football or from behind football. And mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I do. I think it just makes it 
too difficult. And then guys have to figure out ways to get their chances. Yeah. When there's not, if it's an even game, like I'm, I'm saying all this to say this, if it's an even game, this defense is not going to come after you, right? So when are the opportunities for for the secondary to get turnovers, right? And that's what they're all here they for, gotta, right? They got to manufacture them themselves. They got to manufacture their own because it's not getting done from pressure. It's not getting done from, you know, tip balls. It's not getting done from hits. It's not getting done from fumbles. So players, especially guys like Slay, they get a little, you know, they get a little antsy. They get a little ready to make some plays. And so they're going to be playing with the eyes in the backfield. And you can do that for the most part, but you can't do that an entire game. Yeah. And certainly can't do it in certain situations that he's been doing it. So yeah, I, I just think the whole problem, the whole problem with this defense, everything really stems from Gannon and his reluctance to just get aggressive. When this team, I forget what game it was, the second half they came out and they were impressed. They were getting close to the to the receivers. They're getting their hands on the receivers. It was like a completely different defense. They were playing aggressive. The, the secondary looked into it. They didn't look like they were just out in space. And it just makes a difference. So I, yeah, I feel like we're just kind of hammer. I'm just hammering this home, but it's just really, really frustrating to me when you just have so much, so much talent on this defense, and it's like having yeah. a, a a garage full of Lamborghinis. And then you're just gonna drive the Jetta, like the old Jetta down the street. You know, it's, just, <laughs> it's just frustrating. It's like, yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> it's like being in a classroom where you're not being stimulated as a kid. So Absolutely. you start to get distracted. You can do the work, but you start to get distracted. <laughs> oh, look at the airplane over here. Look what they're doing outside. And that's what I feel like Darius Slay and the guys are doing. It's like, man, we're doing the same thing over and over again. I'm getting distracted. You need to do something. Man, you better start, you know, rapping with these ABCs <laughs> or something, make it better. <laughs> something you know something you know whatever it is right so and yes his eyes has been in the backfield and that's because he's trying to manufacture stuff and that's just the bottom line um let's 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 look ahead of you know a little bit um make sure that you are jumping at launch trampoline park we are the best trampoline park family entertainment center in south jersey rock climbing laser tag slam ball basketball trampoline stunt bag ninja warrior course arcade create your own pizza corporate events we do it all full arcade we hit your kids in the face of the dodgeball for you when they talk back to you just tell them to ask for jason Devine. i'll be there all the time so make sure that you join us at launch trampoline park in deford new jersey topic three q eagles most likely will play the winner of dallas or tampa Unless, which is a very doable thing because the Vikings are one of those teams that can look good today but look bad tomorrow. Yeah. So New York, unless there's upset between New York and, and Minnesota or Seattle and Seattle, Seattle's not beating San Francisco. But mm -hmm. New York can beat Minnesota. Yes. I really want to play New York. Not because they're the lower seed, but because of what freaking Thibodeau did to Nick Foles a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I want to play Kayvon Thibodeau and the New York Giants. Right? I want to play them, and I want the receivers, the tight ends, and all everybody to cut the beans off of him as much as they can. <laughs> That's what I want. I, I, I ooh, the, ooh. <laughs> and then the press conference afterward. Yeah, that was so disrespectful, man. So disrespectful. I'm like, this young dude ain't did nothing in this league. <laughs> nothing. Your name ain't Aiden Hutchinson. <laughs> <laughs> That if you said that to it, that is that is stinging. And you over there <laughs> celebrating with angels on a sack that they ain't even pick up. You ain't even you ain't beating anyone. You had a free run to the quarterback on both of your pressures. There was no athleticism that that took. Y'all, they paid me to be a savage, man. You were wide. You were free, <laughs> man. Be humble. I can see if he just beat. Tyron Smith or you beat Trent Williams or something that he got to like, Oh, I'm, I'm arrived, man. You are running on air. Stop playing, man. 
That pissed me off. So I want to see New York Giants. That's why I want to see it. You can go ahead after that. Oh, we, yeah, I like it. I'm good <laughs> with that. Shoot. Oh man, I I, I want to see Dallas, man. I I want to see Dallas. I hate the Giants. I think if we play the Giants, I I think we'll we'll whoop them. I think it'll be an easy win. Um, I think a little bit more challenge would be would be Dallas. And I just mm-hmm. I I really don't. I don't like that organization. Um, I, I just I don't like anything about them, and I'm just really frustrated with the way things ended when we played them last time down there. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think they're frauds. I think they're phonies. I think they they play well at times, but they're not as good as they think they are. I don't think the head coach. I don't think McCarthy's that good of head coach. Um, I don't think Dak is that good of a quarterback. I don't think their receiving core is very good. I think their defense is overrated. I think Dan Quinn is overrated. I think that entire franchise is just overrated. And so for me, I, I want to see Dallas and I want to put them in the dirt. Just mm-hmm. demolish them. That's that's my that's my thing. That's your thing. Yeah. But all these teams are moving. Are the Niners winners of nine straight looking? Like a better overall team than the Eagles at this moment. Ooh. Yes. The answer is yes at this <laughs> moment. Doesn't mean that the Niners are a better football team. Mm-hmm. The Niner, the Niners have some weapons and they have a really good defense. Yes. And they're playing extremely good football at this moment. Doesn't mean that they're the better team. Do I think our offensive line is better? Um, and and more equipped to be able to handle Nick Bosa and Armstead and the other guys that are there, I think that we're more equipped. There's nobody that can cover George Kittle. That big dude run a four four one, just tough mm. to tough yeah. to cover. He's tough. Uh, and and Ayuk is a good route runner. Christian McCaffrey, they got a lot of good weapons. The the key is to frustrate Brock Purdy. And the way we play defense right now, I don't know how much frustrating we're going to be able to get to him. The best way to do the the best the best thing you can do for a young quarterback is light him up. Yeah, and uh, and that's not the style that we play. So, um, the Niners are a tough challenge. I've been saying it all year. I've been saying that that that's the team in the NFC that the Eagles will will probably end up playing in a the NFC Championship against. Um, right, because they're second seed. Yeah, they're second seed. Yep. So they, that's the that's the team. That's, that's the team, team that the Eagles. That's the team that the Eagles got to. They got to beat a few teams, but that's the team that's probably going to be there. And they're well coached too. I yeah. Mean, <laughs> Our old teammates there, coaching them up. On the third, their third string quarterback, seventh yep. round pick, haven't well, haven't missed a step. I mean that. They're yeah. built to go. They're going to be you know, tough. Kyle, you know, Kyle Shanahan is is is, is, is I, I I said this on on one of the TV shows that that um uh, he's you know he's one of the best coaches in the NFL, especially when it comes to offensive coaching. You know what what makes him special is the the personnel that he uses and all the the shifts and motions and the disguising up front, right? Mm-hmm. All of those things, like Q said. It's a, it's a information overload to a defense. It's just, it's a lot of information that they're giving you. It's a lot of misdirection. It's a lot of zone um, running and uh, you got to hit your landmarks. If not, there's always a cutback lane. Like there's a lot of things. They just stress you. They stress you to play perfect. Yep. You know, so um, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, Shane Steich and Jonathan Gannon have um, head coaching interviews this week. Can players still stay focused? Um, do they know, like, when a head coach or when an assistant coach is on interviews, is there a difference to you? You probably would know better than I know. Like, I, I know more, Marty used to go on interviews and stuff like that, but we didn't really. Yeah, I mean, it. so I had John John Harbaugh in 2007. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all didn't, y'all right. didn't stop talking. Sh- sure I mean, he was always happy. A, he was, <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> that was the year that was the year he was a secondary coach. And I remember being like, Man, it's kind of weird. He went from special teams coach to the secondary coach. What does he know about <laughs> safety? What does he know about cornerback? <laughs> so that was weird, but uh, yeah, we was, <laughs> we was <laughs> happy about that. 
<laughs> I remember he he made the new rule that we had to sit next to him in meetings when we was in the team meeting. He's like, guys, over here, over here. He's like, no. He said, get over here. I'm like, oh, man, come on. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, so yeah, Ron Rivera, um, Ch- well, Brand- uh, Childress was 2005, Shermer was 2008, Bags was 2006. Um, so it's it's happened in, in my in my career. Um, we knew about it. It didn't really affect us or, or change anything for us. We just, you know, when they were out, when they're in their interviews and stuff, we'd have someone else kind of running the meeting until then. Um, I do yeah. think game planning, I think it does affect it. I think the the game planning it gets relegated to the rest of the staff and so mm-hmm. there might not be as much cohesion there but it's not that big a deal especially in today's yeah. world I don't, I don't think it's it's too big a deal I think it only matters if the guy that's being that's being pursued by the team is the guy yeah, Andy yeah. Reid was the guy so even if Marty call plays or Doug or uh, Matt Nagy or whoever it was, we knew that the best play caller and the best person to do this is Coach Reed. He may not have the time to do it at the Eagles because he had other stuff to handle, but the best play caller was Coach Reed. And when you, if if we knew that that wasn't changing, it didn't matter who else was going to be there because we knew that that everything started with him. And when you had Jim Johnson, the same was true because you had yeah. a stalwart defensive coordinator there. If it's Jim Johnson is there, as long as it ain't Jim Johnson, everything else can work out. Yep. Yeah. You know, so, but, you know, you got to figure out, okay, how big of a role does Shane Steichen play? How big a role does John? I don't think that, you know, that we can't find, you know, a adequate defense coordinator that that can do better than Jonathan Gannon yeah. with his talent. I, I just, yeah. I, I, I think that's very doable. Yeah, but now let's flip that. A team like the Niners, if you know D'Amico, he's doing interviews in Houston, that that could affect them, right? Because I'm assuming that he's he's yeah, the guy. Yeah, that, that affects them because I'm sure Kyle Shanahan don't know what the hell is going on on defense. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he has a sense of uh, of understanding what they're doing, but calling defense, yes, that would affect them because of how well they're playing, and they haven't played that well without him. So he's definitely a guy, mm-hmm. you know. But he's not one guy on a on a whole roster full of guys. Like if it's, if it Mike T out there loses defense coordinator, he's been defense coordinator forever. Yeah, gotcha. You. you get what I mean? Yeah. So it, it really isn't that big a deal. Yeah, mm-hmm. so so that's that's the way I think about it. All right, <clears throat> question question of the night, and we kind of covered this this question already. Yeah. Um, Q, you got this one. Yeah. Um, this is from Aaron P and Sheila W. Basically, <laughs> okay. So there's basically two people have the same question. So thank you guys. Um, he said, should we be concerned about Slay's recent play? It seems like he's been on the wrong end of big plays for the past month. He has. He's been looking in the backfield. He's been looking in the backfield. He's trying to get a pick. He's trying to make something happen because he isn't in position to make the plays that he wants to make, you know, at times. He got caught a few times. Uh, I don't know if it was a blown coverage. He got caught with the CD, the CD Lamb touchdown when the right side of the defense was in cover three. <laughs> they were in cover. Um, he was supposed to be in cover three. They were in cover four, him and Josiah Scott, and they he eyed number one and let the guy run behind. Whatever it was, that was his fault. And then the third and 30, I don't know why he was so intent on looking in the backfield, even though it wasn't his responsibility. A heads-up corner probably would have sunk with the with, with the guy that runs that fast. But again, he probably looking for a pick at the end of the game. It's third and 30, I'm about to get me one. So mm-hmm. I think that he's just pressing to try to make a play because there's not much aggression by the defense coordinator. That's the gist of it. Yep. It. The only the only other thing I'll add to is we always see this from veteran cornerbacks when they're playing quarterbacks like Davis Webb or um Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. Like we'll see guys play yeah. with the eyes in the back. So my hope is he fixes it when we get to these playoffs because he's gonna have to be on point with everything. He got so, his keys. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just more situational. See, Bradbury, Bradbury 
gets beat in situational football moments, which I don't necessarily mind. Yeah. So Bradbury gets beat on the the third and four, and they run some slick. And he like, oh, I'm about to, I'm going to be in a position to make this play. <laughs> and I'm not saying this, I can understand it though. Like the right. CD Lamb touchdown where it looked like F post and then he ran to the out. I'm like, that looked like F post. I really don't, I was few. I was fooled looking at it. I was like, that's F post. That Oh, he ran to the flat. I, they tricked me. And yeah. I've seen the play, I have ran a play a million times, right? The one versus Shahid against the Saints where he, you know, he he okay. does like an inside release and then runs the go route. It's third and four. You think that's a slant. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Especially when you put a flat route in it too. He's like, man, that's a slant. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I get it. But he has to be more disciplined because he is the one that they're going to pick on down the field because Bradbury doesn't run as well as Slay. So if anything, you know that you can run a go ball on Bradbury because he doesn't run as well. So he got to learn how to, like, be a little bit more patient as well. All right. There we go. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We are still positive that the Eagles can do this. We just Playoffs, need baby. some glimmer of them getting back on track, running the football. Jalen Hurts with the read option, throwing it to A.J. Brown down the field with higher than 60% completion percentage. Also, Devontae Smith still balling, doing his thing the way he's doing it. And let's get Dallas got it in that screen game and get it going. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan Gannon, wake up your inner – Jim Johnson, baby, let's go. Get head out of ass, sir. Let's go. <laughs> ah, please, for the love of God. All please. Right. That's the QA podcast. See. Thank you guys for tuning in to the QA podcast. Check us out on Inside the Birds YouTube channel. Email questions to inside the birds at gmail.com. Thank you to Adam, Jeff, Josh, Evan, everyone that's responsible. Aaron P, Sheila W for the questions this week. Peace out. Q, you got the last word. Hey, as always, man, it's been a pleasure. Like I said, I always learn something from you, man. Love you guys. Love everybody. Thank you for the support. We'll see you guys soon. Let's get this. Well, not this weekend, but we'll get ready for this win next week.